Hello everyone, GM. Thank you for joining us at ETH Denver 2024 and to everyone watching us on Twitch. Uh, thank you for tuning in as well. Our next speaker is Ahmed Al Balagi. He's the CEO and co-founder of Biconomy. Um, his talk today is called Session Keys, Unlocking Account Abstraction for the Masses. Hey, hey everyone, just, we need one minute. We're getting super Tom to fix the issue. Ah, okay, got it. No worries, all right, awesome. Um, hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited to speak to you all today. Um, and thank you all for, for coming. Um, my name is Ahmed, I'm one of the co-founders at Biconomy. And at Biconomy, we build infrastructure for wallets, app chains, dApps, um, to essentially enhance the UX on-chain. And for us at Biconomy, it's all about making on-chain UX as simple as off-chain. So today, I wanted to basically um, talk about session keys and actually do more. I wanted to show you guys session keys. Um, I think a lot of talks about account abstraction with use cases like session keys, there's been a lot of talk but no show or tell. So today I'd love to do a show and tell um, on session keys. So I guess just very quickly, you know, we don't need to go into the weeds. Um, you know, what are session keys and what is it in the context of account abstraction? Um, so session keys in the context, you know, in the Web2 world um, are essentially, you know, JWTs, right? Um, and so, you know, they use JSON web tokens as a way to authorize transactions. And we essentially do this every single day, right? Like, you know, we grant permission to applications, be it Google, Zoom, Slack. Um, and so this is something that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, this is all centralized verification and authorization. Um, in the context of account abstraction, session keys become a lot more cooler because they're now programmable. And so what this essentially means for, for the user is that they don't now need to have wallet pop-ups every time they do a transaction. And so imagine you're doing a trade, an NFT mint, anything on-chain. When, uh, when you give a permission that is limited, controlled, and that's verifiable, you essentially can have an amazing UX um, from the wallet or the app player. And so what this means is here, temporary keys are generated um, for the user in the browser or phone or even on the laptop. Um, and of course, this is all going to be based on predefined conditions that either the user sets or the wallet sets or maybe the dApp sets on behalf of the user. Um, and the great thing about this is because this is all on chain, you know, this means we can have de decentralized verification authorization. So we basically built um, uh, a V1 implementation of our session keys for our modular smart accounts uh, by economy. And essentially what we optimized for was sort of three things. The first was modularity. The second was UX and security. And the third was um, optimizing L1 gas fees. And so essentially for us, this was, whoops. I don't know what's going on. All right. And essentially for us, um, we, we built this uh, implementation with these three um, core things in mind. Um, and when it came to the modularity, the reason why we built this is so that for, for dApps, they could essentially have a separation between general permissions and use case specific permissions or follows that they have in their app. Um, and then sort of when it came to the UX and security side, they could basically think about the security they want to implement and think about the user flows in a bit more detail. Um, and we also uh, basically implemented Merkle trees um, in order to, uh, at least on the, the design of the session keys, um, in order to um, optimize for R1 gas. And in a way, what this kind of looks like, you know, from let's say a gaming perspective, um, what a dApp could do is essentially allow the player and the user um, to have these different conditions um, based um, on, on their application. And so whenever the user is doing a transaction, um, if that transaction basically 
um, if it uh, if it's basically obliged by these criteria, then they don't need to sign anything. The transaction just happens whenever they're doing an, a simple operation. And so, of course, this is in a way what we wanted to enable um, for dApps that are building with account abstraction. So, like I said, I want to show and tell. So let's look through a demo. And this is basically a live implementation right now that you guys can use. Uh, okay, this is a trading example. I know it's not a full on like, this won't bring, you know, 1 billion users to Web3, but it still at least showcases a real flow that people, like thousands of traders, even tens of thousands of traders are using on a daily basis. So, all right. So over here as a user, I go on manage, I go on one click trading, I could basically see that my session is inactive. I could then dictate how long I want the session to look like. So here the user has chosen five hours. They enable this. It's one simple signature request for the user. And then it becomes active. This session happens on chain. And so now for the user, what they're able to do is they can now do a simple trade. Um, you know, they're longing ETH over here, which is probably a good idea, no financial advice. Um, they're opening in position, they're confirming the order, and it's just as simple as that. There is no wallet pop-up. Um, you know, this is all on chain, all, verifi all verifiable, um, and here the transaction has succeeded. So from the user point of view, especially from a trader point of view, when, you know, when seconds matter in the form of trading, this use case, I, I'd say the trading use case has been like the number one use case that we've seen um, in account abstraction. And here the user is doing another position, which is basically closing the position, and here they're submitting the close order. And again, within these few hours that they've enabled this permission, um, they don't need to worry with any wallet, wallet pop-ups, no gas, or anything like that. Um, you guys might ask, okay, so how is the user paying gas? Um, there is a gas tank that the user has pre-funded. So essentially, this permission is based saying, okay, um, or at least on the DAP level, it's taking gas from the gas tank, which basically makes this UX super, super easy. So that's, you know, um, you know the, I'd say a real life implementation on session keys. Um, and so what, what does this look like in terms of adoption? You know, wh where are we at with this? So I would say the number one use case that we've seen has been for trading. So we've worked with companies like Rage Trade, Quinta, and Deepurp. Um, and it's been quite astonishing, actually. Like, we've seen over 15,000 session keys registered on chain. Um, you know, like, yes, it's small in number, but it kind of goes to show, OK, you know, the, the impact that it could have. Um, and what was really cool that we saw was that we enabled a form of multi-chain transactions that we kind of haven't seen before. So what does that mean? If I'm a user, um, uh, like for example, with Race Trade, they're a perp aggregator. Now, as a perp aggregator, um, they aggregate perp platforms on Arbitrum, on Optimism, and other, um, and other chains. And so what they enable the user to do is I could basically sign a transaction on Arbitrum um, for me to execute a trade on Optimism, right? Now, why is this useful? Because it's useful for this use case, right? But in, if we think about sort of further use cases, imagine a user had a wallet on Arbitrum and Optimism, and they wanted to send funds from their Optimism, let's say, wallet, right? And in this chain abstraction world where the user doesn't need to think about um, you know, switching the network ID or anything, they could literally sign a transaction on whatever chain they're on, and then it would execute um, the transaction on another chain. So this was, I would say, a very, in a way, a more sophisticated example of how this, you know, was working for, um, for, for one client of us. Um, as, we, as we went through this, there was a lot of learnings from V1. Um, you know, we wanted to introduce security policies or more generalized security policies. However, the V1 design was not that compatible. Um, there was also, a V1 had a dependence on an off-chain layer. And so this also led to um, complications if a user had a session key on one app 
and a session key on another app? And what if there was, let's say, a collision of session keys? Um, gas costs were also high. I remember when I was using these platforms, I was paying like a dollar you know, for, um, to, to, to enable a session. Um, and uh, th this is, I mean, for traders, it's not a lot, but if you're a user using any form of, you know, any simple application, this is still a high amount. Um, and at the same time, to achieve, I would say, multi-chain flows and, and, uh, tra and essentially transaction flows, the developer had to integrate different modules. So basically, the, 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 the integration was a bit complex from the developer side. So now, um, as by economy, we're going to be rolling out um, Session Keys V2. And essentially, you know, this is an upgraded version from all the things that we've learned. Um, so what does this mean? It basically means it's more L2 native um, and it's scalable. Um, we are focusing on minimizing a lot of cost in terms of gas. Um, so that's focusing on minimizing call data and allowing for sessions um, that might have to be enabled separately they can now be enabled in one transaction um, so in order to save the gas cost for the user. So the, the formal batch transactions could also work, work in this case. Um, and also, we, we've, we, we found a way to like, enable multiple sessions that could be done across chains within a single click as well. So these are all, you know, I'd say, improvements that, that we, we, we are building towards with, with V2. And so when we look at, like, the immediate benefits and improvements, you know, they literally span across security and transparency, cost and time, and DevEx. And so for us, security is paramount, um, and especially if we want to enable an, you know, a verifiable way to, uh, to check out sessions and, and uh, a really a decentralized way to authorize them. And so this basically means now anyone could basically have their own form of security policy, or we can have a general form of security policies um, with V2. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we now, we're now able to reduce the cost and time for developers to integrate um, session keys, um, especially with the gas costs, which are, which are super important to optimize for. And then there's also DevX improvements. Now, the developer does not need to integrate many different modules, or they don't have to do a lot of complex things like our previous clients had in order to enable um, customized user flows. One thing that I also wanted to talk about here was, um, you know, we had this concept of ABI session validation module. So essentially what this means is um, with our V1 of session keys, um, every DAP that we worked with had to build their own uh, custom session validation modules. Now what is a custom session validation module? Uh, let's say the, a, a DAP wants to enable free NFT mints for example, um, using session keys. They would have to build their own SVM. They would have to write it in Solidity. They would have to get it audited. They would have to get it deployed as well. And so this was a very, very long journey for applications to do. Now, for these more complex DeFi applications, it was way more than just a simple NFT you know, SVM that they had to build. So. A lot of the developer integration work and time actually went in building out these SVMs. Um, now, what's cool with V2 uh, and with this ABI um, session validation module that we have is, you know, we're going to have pre-deployed uh, modules, meaning that developers don't need to reinvent the wheel for many, many use cases. Um, and as well as if a, if a developer had a specific flow that they wanted to implement, they could do it without having to code which is super cool. So it kind of expands the, um, the, the developer crowd that we, we want to attract to this. And the great thing is there's no overhead. You don't need to get this audited. You don't need to um, um, write Solidity or, or deploy anything. And so it just becomes a way, way easier um, sort of experience for, for developers and apps. Um, so we're really excited about this. We're you know, going live with this soon. And we would love to see sort of how, it, how, how it operates in the world. So, yeah, um, just wanted to touch base very quickly about, um, you know, uh, us and uh, by economy. Um, you know, we're, you know, if you're a developer wanting to utilize account abstraction, you know, I'd love, you know, for, for you guys to work with us. Um, you know, we essentially provide a full 
stack account abstraction SDK from all the way from modules, the smart account layer, um, to um, paymaster service and the bundler service. And I did want to take some time to like talk about some of our clients. So we just recently integrated with Trust Wallet um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is to power the new um, wallet called Swift. It's a contract account. So what we've enabled Trust Wallet to do is for their users to pay gas in over 250 tokens. And it's been already two weeks since launch, and it's really interesting to see that the top two tokens being used to pay for gas for any form of operation is USDT and, and TWT, which is a Trust Wallet token. Um, and what Trust Wallet did was if you pay with Trust Wallet token, you kind of have a discount on gas. So it's a pretty cool sort of token use case that we, we were able to enable, enable for them with account abstraction. Eccentric, now this was a, um, a uh, announcement we did yesterday. Eccentric is basically a product on Mercedes-Benz. We officially announced our partnership with Mercedes-Benz to allow um, them to uh, enable account abstraction in this new data marketplace um, that they're building on top of blockchain rails. Um, this data marketplace is going to be about automobile data. Um, and essentially, for them, because Web3 is really important and it's easier to enable um, you know, the ITR marketplace for, for this data, um, they wanted to use account abstraction to make it easy for people to onboard um, and to access the platform without having to pay gas, of course. Um, another cool integration was uh, chess.com and Animoca. You guys might have, um, you, you, were, you, you saw the previous presentation with, with the Web3 auth. So we worked with um, chess.com and Animoca on the new game called anychess.com. So it allowed, it essentially, so this game is basically like a magical chess.com and users get like free NFTs for, you know, doing whatever they're doing on, on the game itself. But what was really cool was this was an integration with both Web3Auth and Biconomy. So Web3Auth was a social login provider um, because we don't, provide, uh, we don't provide a social login solution. We, we work with um, uh, folks like Web3Auth. And so they, they used Web3Auth for social login and Biconomy for the full account abstraction solution. Um, and right now, it's one of the biggest, I would say, um, dApps that are continuously doing transactions on a day-to-day -to -day basis. Um, and yeah, and we, we've also have um, gotten on board um, folks like JP Morgan as well to use um, account abstraction in their POC last year with Project Guardian. Um, and so far, all, all of this sort of, all of these efforts has already enabled us to become the largest account abstraction provider in this space. So, you know, we've, we've kind of like gone through um, so much in terms of building the stack out, you know, a lot of trial and error and ensuring that everything is as reliable and as scalable as possible. So, you know, if you guys want to build with us, please let us know. I'm, I'll be around here for a bit. And yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to, to take any questions that you guys have. I think we have another minute or so. All right, if there are no questions, it means that I've explained everything clearly. I hope that was the case. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Let's give it up one more time for this amazing talk. And thank you so much for joining us today.